got back from Italy, I was there for 18 days in, in Bulgari uh, and, and Tuscany, and I did a little, uh, a little tour, and it was all fact-finding so that I could help us drink better wines and eat better food. So it was, it, it was something that somebody had to do, I had to do it, so I went. I did it, I did it. And You're a martyr. Anyway, so I, I am, a modern-day martyr. So while I was there, I visited Isla de Elba, which is an island off the Tuscan coast. It's approximately 15 kilometers off the coast. And that was where Napoleon was exiled. I went and saw Napoleon's house, the prison, the house or prison, whatever you call it, palace. I call it a palace. And I've decided that Elba is not Siberia and Napoleon really was an exile. And because of that, I wrote a book while I was there because, called Napoleon Wasn't Really Exiled. And it's gonna, we're self-publishing it and it'll be out in a month and you can uh, buy it on our websites. And it's a, it's a pretty fun little journey about my trip. Uh, it's fun, it's easy reading, let's say. So, I just got back from Bulgari and a lot of friends say, oh, I'm, I'm planning a trip to Italy, where should I go? What should I do? Who should I see? And I say, wherever and whenever you can go to Italy, go. Go by all means. Well, where do I go? Anywhere anybody wants to take you, you go in Italy because it's all great. And the thing I love about Italy is not one place, but it's the Italian table. And why do I like the table? Because it's kind of lost in America. We used to have Sunday dinners, we used to have these nuclear families, but today mom and dad a lot work, they work a lot, both work, and we're always on the run. It's very busy in America. Well, in Italy, they're happy with their pace. Five day work week is a long work week. 40 hours, well, that's kind of long too. And they always have time for an espresso, a glass of wine, and they always have time for family and friends. And what's most important is when they invite you to your home, you sit around the table, and they, they think about the table. The table is, is really important. And they think about the table, they think about the food that's put on the table, they think about the wine that's on the table that accompanies the food, because nowhere else in the world do people think about food and wine together as Italians do? You can say the French do, I don't believe it. The Italians really do think about food and wine. And when you're invited to a table, they're passionate about the food and wine that they put about the table. And the most important part about the table is they decide who sits in the seats at the table. And that is also very important. So they think about the seats, they think about the people who fill the seats. They think about the food, and they think about the wine. And when you sit there, you have an experience that's often missed in America because life is too fast. So what do I say? I say, slow down. <laughs> Invite some friends over your house. You don't even have to have Italian food. Cook a pot of chili. Put burgers on the grill. It doesn't matter. Open a bottle of wine. Open a can of beer. It doesn't matter. Sit down. Enjoy the people you're with. Give them a hug. Give them a kiss. Make believe like we're in Italy. Help me. Help yourselves. Help your family. Bring it back. Because that is so important in Italy. And that's the best tip I can give you about the Italian culture, about Italian wine, and Italian food. With that, Aldo is going to talk about the next two wines we're going to drink. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What I, what I forgot, and I apologize, is to introduce my team. You know, I don't travel alone, I have a team. So, here we are, my importers, Ben and Andrew, my distributor, Patrick. It's called the three-tier system, as you know. That's how it works in America. Um, all of the above wonderful people know as much, know as much as I do about Antinori. They just don't have the accent. <laughs> the guy who's supposed to talk to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The next two wines, they couldn't be more different in any possible way. Two different regions, Toscany and Puglia, the extreme south, different everything. Uh, the first, the Toscano Rosso, the little Antinori, our best known product, our best selling product, our 
flagship drug, if you want. Villa Dinori is everywhere, in Italy, in Europe, in Japan, anywhere, in Russia, anywhere with the business. Villa Dinori, I would say, define our war in the wine business. Perhaps, perhaps, the best combination of price and quality in the market, in any market. So here it is, this Villa Antinori is 65% Sangiovese and then Cabernet, Merlot and Syrah. You do the math, but it's 2015 and 5. So something like that, maybe a little variation from winter to winter, but roughly that's what it is. We spent 12 months in a small barrel. Now this is an important one. And if you leave it open like we do tonight, I mean, you will go for a couple of hours. This is a beautiful, beautiful drink. Drink it now, as they say in the business. Or if you want to keep it, it will go for about 10 years, roughly. Although there is no reason to do that. I know it's I just open it, buy it, and drink it. But anyway, the next wine is from Puglia. Now, Puglia has two or three different regions where they make wine. This is from the north of Puglia. This is from a little town called Minervino Murge. The rocky hills. Not many trees at all, hardly any grass. I mean, these are difficult, rocky soils, inland, inland of Puglia. And the grape is Agliani, one of the oldest grapes in Italy, called Aglianico from the Greek, Hellenico. That was the Italian word that became Aglianico. So this is the Greek grape, surviving the south. The Romans used to make wine with this grape, and we still do today. So 100% Italianico Poca di Lupo is the name of the estate, the mouth of the wall. An incredible place. Uh, it looks like a, a movie set, it looks like a Hollywood something, but it's real. I mean, it's made in stone, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Enjoy your Poca di Lupo. I have to warn you, this is a big wine. This is a seriously big one. So take it easy, have a little seat, uh, you know, hold yourself on the chair. <laughs> this is really, really a, a, a beautiful. I mean, it's easy to drink, but it's a powerful one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very much.